Hi, my name is Karina. I'm from Canada. I've always really loved languages and thank you Bahadur for letting me be part of this. Most of my family can speak Mennonite Low German. The Mennonites are kind of descended from the Anabaptists, which is from the Reformation. Similar origins to Amish, like to the Amish and the, the Hutterites. Mm. And we kind of moved across Europe until we got to the Russian Empire. And then right after Canada became its own country, some Mennonites were invited to come settle in Canada. And that's how my family came to be here. And the language kind of originated from the Vistula area in like Poland, Prussia. And there's a lot of similarities with German, but also some with Dutch, like there's a lot of Dutch influence in there. And I've never learned Dutch, but if I read Dutch or if I hear a little bit of it, I can pick out some words and be like, okay, we would say it kind of the same or, oh no, that's more like German. <laughs> that's completely different. Hi, yeah. I'm Matthias. Um, I'm from Germany. I've been living for 10 years in the Czech Republic in Prague. I really like languages as well. So I speak German as my native language, English and also Czech. I learned a little bit of Norwegian, but maybe like a couple of months. And now I'm also very curious what kind of language uh, we are supposed to hear now <laughs> or today. <laughs> my name is Remke. I'm uh, from the Netherlands. I live right in the middle of the country near a city called Utrecht. Um, the languages I'm comfortable with are obviously Dutch. I also speak English and German, so mainly only Germanic languages, which is why it's so interesting to hear like a Germanic language I've never, I've never really heard of. I know it exists, but I'm really curious to see, um, you know, how much I can actually understand it. Perfect. Thank you so much. So uh, now we're uh, going to get started, and just to explain for the audience the the way this is structured is. We're going to have, uh, Karina is going to be reading a few different sentences so that it's easy to start with and then make it more challenging. Yeah, I tried, I tried to set it up so it starts kind of easy and then gets a little bit harder. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So whenever you're ready, Karina, you can go ahead and uh, read the first one. Nicht viel Kinder können nur Deutsch reden. Ah, not many children can speak German. Yeah. This would be my yeah, first it. idea. <laughs> also, got well, it. Yeah, that's exactly it. Well, I, what is really interesting, because uh, I live, uh, I used to live in a region close to Berlin, so like one hour in the south from Berlin called Wittenberg, the city. And we speak a dialect there, which is very close to Brandenburg and Berlin. And if I would say it in my home dialect, it would sound a little bit like that. So I just thought, okay, okay well, cool. what uh, would a farmer yeah. say in my hometown? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's much better than I thought. Yeah, it's quite yeah, interesting. Yeah, you got it exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I understood the same, but it's it still sounds like really foreign. Can you repeat it one more time? Just so you can yeah. kind of hear what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So I, I got the same. Um, okay. It's... Like in Dutch, it's if you don't know any German, I don't think many people would understand. Like reden, reden, yeah. we we reden. have that more like yeah, we have that more like for like a speech kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like colloquially, you would just say um, for the last part, kunnen Duits praten, kunnen Duits spreken, mm -hmm. spreken, mm -hmm. so. Like, I, I understood it, but again, it's like a lot of mental gymnastics uh, to get there. Yeah. And just a question. Th there was a little word like nu. Is that like noon? Now. Like now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so... we seem to cut a lot of the last letters off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. The, the ng that you have in high German, for us, a lot of, a lot of the time we'll write it as like nj. So it's like a nya. Yeah. Ah, kind of okay. Kinga. Kinga. Yeah. Instead of kinga. Ah, okay. uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I think also, I know people that also skip the D from time to time. They wouldn't say kinder, but kinna. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it sounded quite close to that. Okay. Oh, very cool. Okay. Kipmo, do es ein Sommerfell. 
Okay. Ah, I got like almost everything. Yeah, just the uh, last the last part maybe of <laughs> the last either the last word or the the last part of the word. Guck mal, da ist ein Sommer fällt. Um, something look like look, look, there is something that there is a summer. Okay, I'll, I'll just repeat it. So kick mal yeah. da sein Sommer fell. The last word I don't really pronounce but uh, so the last, similar the to last part is that Is the last part is that one noun because I I yeah. I chopped it up into an adjective and a noun but is it like a, it's noun a, yeah a summer an and it's also a, part of the summer right so it is connected to the summer mm -hmm. yeah can you repeat the last word zomafel that one I think is closer to Danish or maybe Norwegian I don't know why mm -hmm. um yeah. Sonne, fjell. Well, fjell is mountain in Norwegian, but a summer mountain that no, would not make animal. sense, right? Or is that does it make sense animal. for you? <laughs> an, an, an animal? animal? A small animal, huh? Oh, aha. Uh -huh. You repeat okay. it one more time. Uh, Zoma fjell. Zoma fjell. No, no, that's it's not clicking for me. Insect. Yeah. Ah, oh wow. What is ah. it? So a, mos a mosquito, maybe? No. No. Uh, a butterfly, maybe a butterfly. Yeah, yeah, butterfly. Oh my gosh. Butterfly? Okay. Wow. Butterfly. I think in oh, Danish wow, it's like yeah. Zomafu or something. And I'm not sure how to pronounce no it. No idea. Mm -hmm. Wow. No, okay. no, I would not. I would not have gotten that. It's in Dutch. In Dutch, it's flinder. Yeah, summer bird is how it would be literally translated. Ah, Zoma, okay. Summer. And then, like, like summer okay. is Zoma, and then fail is bird. Like yeah, fool. like vogel. Yeah. Okay. Fool, fool is vogel. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ich will mit dir spazieren. Hast du Tipps, Dale? Oh wow, could you repeat that? Aquel met the spazieren. Hast du Tipp von Dale? That was the first. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, so like I can understand almost anything. Like for a regular Dutch speaker, it's like spazieren is like very different. Uh and the last part is it sounds kind of familiar, but it, I'm not really, okay, not really sure of the last part. Yeah, has to teach Fandeo. Fandeo. Mm -hmm. Has to is the ah, same yeah. as Fandeo. So teach, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. So I understood definitely the uh, the first part. Uh, I want to go for a walk with you. Ich will mit dir spazieren gehen. And then uh, I also knew from Norwegian what... Uh, Uh, time means in your language so yeah I, I could uh, just add to that so do you have time for that uh, very very close there's a couple words here uh, the last word fundeo is yeah. close to the dutch for today ah, yeah. oh, uh -huh. and for us spazieren is a little bit different like it doesn't oh. mean walk ah okay so what does it mean then <laughs> Um, for for us, it's like to visit with someone. Ah, okay. Like you're you're talking with like you're already there. We have the word um, besuchen, I think is how we would say it, which is like besuchen, which is mm -hmm. going to visit someone. But yeah. spazieren is like when you're already with the other person or the other people, and you're just talking. Like Zeit, yeah. Also, Zeit. willst du mit mir uh, heute spazieren gehen? Uh, hast du Zeit dafür? Hmm. So that would be the German translation. Yeah, I think that was quite easy to understand, especially the first part. Uh, we didn't know what this teat in the beginning, but but the yeah. first part was really easy. Uh, this one is the most challenging, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's that, that, I mean... that last part is like, <laughs> This is, is uh, yeah, she is a, and that's it. 
that uh, they, she yeah. is a something. So there might be something afterwards, like an adjective, but maybe you can give us some hints, like she is maybe something, like, someone. I understand, like, Frau. <laughs> I, I keep hearing Frau. So is we, that, like, is that correct? Is it something? Schmuck I think. German, the word that I was thinking in high German that sounds similar is schmuck. Ah, okay. But it's okay. it's not jewelry for us. It's a word that you can use to kind of describe jewelry or if you want ah. to compliment someone. Okay, so schmuck we also use. It's not like official, uh, a formal German, but I could say it like schmucke Frau, like a very really pretty, beautiful woman. It could be that yeah. if you want to go in this direction. Mm, so she's a pretty woman. Like, is that the meaning girl. of the sentence? A girl. pretty girl. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm from Canada. And I'm Ellen. And all of Groot Ellen Oak. Over my photo is in Groot Fora. Or in Frusland, you're born. So can I make sure? Did you say, like, I'm from Canada and so are my parents and grandparents? But my... Mm -hmm. Ancestors were born in Russia. Close. Very, or very Prussia, close. maybe. No, it's Russia. Oh, yeah. Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think uh, could you repeat the part after the grandparents? And then we could slowly try to catch it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oba mean photo Ah. Aber mein okay, but my my, my grandfather. Are... Uh. There is the word grandfather in there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's I thought you said like my my grandfather is what they are, mm. and then there's something, but um. No, it's I said my one more father, time? That that part or the whole thing? Yeah, uh, just. Uh, the whole thing, maybe. That part? Yes. Whole thing? Uh, just the whole thing. Exxon from yeah. Canada. Exxon from Canada. Un mina Ellen, un alo mina Grout Ellen Oak. Oba min fora zin Grout fora. Bor in Russland, yeboren. Yeboren. Aha, so they were born in Russia, basically. So the, the last part. Yeah, uh, yeah, so. Born in Russia. Yeah, yeah. so it's that, it's that middle part, uh, which you... Uh, talked about with this crowd that 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 kind of escapes me yeah for me the same yeah like mean photo mean yeah, yeah it sounds like yeah and or like zine grout photo like grout photo is Close great yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so if you take the last part grout photo photo yeah Mean photo. My father. My yeah, father. My dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my my dad's grandfather. My ah, father. okay. Mm -hmm. So your dad's father was born in Russia. My dad's basically. grandfather. Uh, your dad's grandfather. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your dad's mm -hmm. grandfather. Oh, okay, yeah. Now, now, now that you explain it. Yeah. I don't know why yeah, we do that. The, the zine is like Zine. Yeah. yeah. Like my uh -huh. father is grandfather. <laughs> oh, but the, and like at the start, did you say like exine? Exan. 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 It sounds like it, That's yeah. I it am. sounds like you. Yeah, it sounds to me like the first part is like I, but then Ex you use like the plural part. Oh. <laughs> like R. To me, it sounds like you say I R. No, it's exan, and then the plural you have a T on the end. Zant. Ah, okay, yeah. because mm -hmm. so. in Dutch, that, you have sein, but that's only used for like we. Mm -hmm. And okay. they, like we are, wij zijn. So to me, it sounded like you you, you <laughs> used a, a singular yeah, well, a personal it's, pronoun like, and then a plural. Things I've read, they ha also have like XZ, but I don't think I've ever heard that. I much I hear XN much more often. Mm. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So what, what I was curious about, like uh, the Mennonites, aren't there, are there, aren't there also Mennonites in like all the way south in Guatemala and yep. very far down south? And is there yeah, language like Bolivia, any... Argentina. Like, Sorry, quite all the way down. 
Yeah. I think it's and there are probably some dialect differences now, probably. And I think they probably yeah. ours is influenced by English because we've been in Canada for so long and I think theirs is probably more influenced by Spanish. Yeah, that's it's what cool. that's really what I'm getting yeah. from this. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the other thing, like the g sound that you have at the beginning of the words, like gish vista. Like a lot of times for us it's a J, like a Y, like mm -hmm. Gish Vista. Ah oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yelled or yelled for for money, yelled. Ah, yeah. So in Dutch, that would always well, not every time, always... but a lot of the time. Yeah, often where it's or yeah. yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Like we say yesterday. Ah, gisteren. Yeah, well, this is super. I think you could even understand me more if I speak in dialect then, because this is so much influenced by, by the lower German. <laughs> like, gestern, gestern war ich einkaufen. Uh, und uh, was hast du gemacht, yeah, for instance? This is yeah. really interesting. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Wow. But the funny mm -hmm. thing is, like, for, for Plothich, like, it wasn't written for a long time. Like there's there's no official way to to write it, so there's like a few a couple different unofficial ways, so it's kind of a mess. <laughs> and the but my parents like they grew up in the like the old colony Mennonite church, and whenever they wanted to write something, they would write it in High German. So they have these books ah. like the song books from the church that are written in High German with like the old printed oh, yeah. script. Ah oh, wow okay. Hmm. Oh that's really cool. <laughs> How actively is it still being used? Is it is it in danger at all, or is it still like uh, very much? I think it's like language? less than five hundred thousand. Okay. It's, I think it's an endangered okay. like endangered language, but yeah, like at least around here we have quite still we still have quite a few people who can speak it. But that's yeah, great. This is that's... <laughs> it's 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 important I mean, to like teach children. Like I hope that it will be preserved and. Uh, retained and, hopefully yeah that's kind of why i'm trying to like get better at speaking it yeah and and actually you honestly when, when you do have like when we do videos like this because i've done a lot of videos with endangered languages languages that are spoken by less than fifty thousand people in some cases and yeah it at least brings a lot more awareness and attention to it and uh hopefully encourages people to to keep them alive like not not let these languages go extinct because yeah yeah yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's it's been absolutely awesome to be able to hear a language which you, I mean, you've I've heard of it, but you barely know it exists. Even though it has such a historical and linguistic connection to languages I'm very familiar with. Yeah, and I well, think that's similar, like that I can think of with, with Dutch is like at home, like in High German, it's zu Hause. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, Dutch absolutely. Is, Thuis? yeah. Yeah, we say tus. Tus. Ah. ah, that's that's oh. exactly what my we grandma say says. My grandma's <laughs> from the east. And yeah, she we would say, say she would always say like, yeah, it been you tus. Yeah, that's how we say it. Tus. Well, ah, really, really interesting. Cool. cool. Nice. Well, it's good to see all these similarities. I'm really a big fan of cognates. I also teach that to my students. I'm working also in kindergarten and we start with uh, words uh, which are similar in both languages in German and Czech. But now even easier if you go in, in this old language spoken many centuries ago, it was a really a, quite an interesting journey. I mean, I'm really grateful for that. So thank you for organizing this conference, this, this video call. Really, really cool. I learned also <laughs> more things. And yeah, I think... Um, it would help me a little bit if I could hear a few sentences before, and then I think I could understand a little bit more. Like right now, we were just, uh, we were, you know, um, uh, you just uh, it was, it was very pushed fresh, that into, right? like you had yeah, to it was super it fresh and it was, it was very hard to catch up so easily, you know, exactly. without any context, without any other support or help. Uh, but it was still fun. It, I really like that. Thank you for that opportunity. Like, yeah, I feel like we're very close. Mm -hmm. Like we're very close to to grasping and understanding it. Just yeah. a little bit of exposure, and I think it would take all that much effort. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And thank you so much to both of you for 
being a part of this and thanks a lot to Karina for putting the, the sentences yeah, and thank you. all of that together and um, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to bring attention to this wonderful language and hope to to uh, the people who do speak it I do want to mention please teach your children the language and yes. definitely pass it on <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure great right. cool. thank you so much again have a, a wonderful uh, I mean Karina your day is just starting <laughs> I haven't even gone through yet. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good day, yeah. Yeah. Good and uh, and yeah. yeah, we'll be in touch. Yeah. Thank you very much also from my side. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Cool, guys.